Now, at one point, there was supposed to be a, a biopic about the Juice Crew. I guess it's supposed to be called The Vapors. Like, whatever happened with that? Well, once again, people started reaching too deep. Well, it wasn't too deep. Now, let's say it's like this. You got somebody that's dealing with millions of dollars, right? And then they're putting up a little bit of money and people are fighting over this little bit of money. You don't want to do business with rats in a cage like that. You know what I'm saying? This is a little bit of money they're dealing with, but everybody kept reaching. I want more because it was my idea. I want more because I'm the this, and I want more because I'm the that, to the point where the whole project got scraped. Look, I got, look, I got the letter of intent sitting in the room right now. That's all I can say. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, now, you had done an interview uh, a while back, well, actually somewhat recently, where you actually talked about you got molested as a child. Yes. Where it was like, and that what kept, made me look at Chris. It was like, we, it, I'm going to tell you how it worked. There was a guy in our neighborhood, and you would wonder why he, you know, we was a skate team. And you would wonder why certain cats, I'm sitting there, how it happened, right? He would sit us next to him in the driver's seat of the car and, and let us do the steering wheel or either stick do the stick shift. And all of a sudden, I'm old enough to know better. A hand come around and grab me by my crotch. Now, I mean, that right there is molestation in itself. Never no penetration, none of this kind of crap. But I was old enough to know that this ain't right. So I got away from that situation and never went back to it. But in all deal, a man touched my crotch. That's molestation. You know what I mean? And so with this new thing coming up with Bam and with, with and people getting on me about, not getting on me, but from, from one person's response of feeling no empathy towards people of that, that's like a slap in the face to every woman that's been raped, every child that's been touched, every, you know what I'm saying, to every victim everywhere. And for you to be such this knowledgeable, you know, want to be for your people and to say something like that really struck a nerve in me. Well, do you know Bambada? I know of Bambada. I've been in his presence one or two, three times in my life. You know what I'm saying? And when I see him, hey, Shan, how you doing? Because, you know, he knows. But that right there is not, that's not, that's not cool. You know what I'm saying? And right. I well. condemn, I condemn people like him for the simple fact that I've had a man touch me. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, that, that's not cool. So I can't ride with that. I can't say, oh, well, let's keep it hip hop. Forget hip hop. You can't keep rapists safe. Well, I've been around uh, Bambata. I mean, we've done like two interviews and uh, I remember this one time we were both on tour, we were in Belgium, and we knew the promoter, so we hung out, we had dinner together, and you know, I went to his show. He's always been real cool with me. So when the allegations first started coming out, I didn't cover them, because I'm like, you know, one person talking, I ain't going, you know, we don't know. But then there was more allegations, and the type of people that were making the allegations and the stories they were coming up with were so detailed that we had to cover it. Hold on, but now you got to think that he did apologize for it. You can't go no deeper than him coming out of his own mouth saying he's sorry for doing so-and-so or even sitting at a table and discussing this dialogue. If I didn't do something, I ain't sitting at no table with you. I'm not doing none of that. So why would you sit at a table with people and discuss dialogue of saying why you did it or how, how you're so sorry for doing something? Mm -hmm. So there is no more questions of an allegation when that goes down. Now, how did you feel when KRS-One uh, defended Bambada and said it doesn't matter what he did, he's still the godfather of hip-hop? See, that's what I'm saying. You, you, uh, that's a slap in the face to every, every child, every rapist, every, every person that got raped. Out in the, that's a slap in the face. You know what I'm saying? You don't care. So that right there just made me have to look at this man one more time. And just say, you're so knowledgeable. You got all this book knowledge. You, you, you run around and, and talk to these lecturing in these places. Which made me have to go even look back at some of his lectures. And I sit there and I look. And he says, well, there's a voice in your head. And you speak. 
But what is that voice? The fifth dimension. No, that's your subconscious. And how are you going to sit in, bunch of, in front of a bunch of college students and say this and none of them start throwing tomatoes at you is far beyond me. Which just lets me know that he has that same manipulative quality as Bam had. That you're a manipulator. You've manipulated people so much to think, I don't believe that there's a hip-hop temple. But some, pe- you, some people have power of persuasion like that, and he's one of them. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe nothing he says. I listen to him, and I'm like, all right, cool, and you read that from a book. You're passing on knowledge that you've read somewhere, blah, blah, blah. Let's get to the facts. Let's, where's your hypothesis? Where's your theory? Well, I'm really not going to get on Chris. Let him do his thing. Happy for you. But all I'm saying is I would have would have been one of them ones when you said, well, what's that voice? You said the word in your head and you actually heard it. You know what I mean? That, that, that right there is bull crap. <laughs> That's your subconscious mind. These words that I'm speaking right now were thought of in my head before I said it. But at the si- same simultaneous time that I'm saying them, uh, they're being thought, and the mind just works like that. Well, you had, a, you had a song that not everyone knew about called Time for Us to Defend Ourselves. Right. And uh, one of your friends actually got killed by the police. Right, and this was back in the 80s or 90s. And my boy Rich Luke... He got killed by the police. It's like his mother called for an ambulance because he was having an asthma attack. You know, he used the pump. And when the police got there, they're talking about he's not being cooperative and this, that, and the third, and they choked him out. And so I made that song, Time for Us to Defend Ourselves, back then. And if you look at the times in our days, it's still going on, which just goes to show you that nobody really is listening. Nobody really cares. Kill them all day. You know what I mean? I protested, and how I protested was I made a video, Time for Us to Defend Ourselves, which the cops hated me in the projects, but she really couldn't do nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? I was making my money legitimately. Uh, I was riding around in, 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 in foreign cars. Yeah, I was doing drugs, but you wasn't catching me selling them. You know what I mean? So there was really nothing they could do to me. And what they really hated was the fact that I did a video in the projects and I had a fake cop car in the middle of the project. It was unheard of for a normal car to drive in the middle of the projects. Oh, that day I parked my Audi right on the block, right on 10th Street. They hated me, but they couldn't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? But it was all in, in, in the name of Rich Luke to show the violence that's going on in the projects. And hip-hop has been, and still will, well, it's not that way now, but hip-hop has been the voice of the hood to tell the story of what's going on in our neighborhood, what's going on that the people just don't see. So that has been our avenue just to discuss and, and let the people know what's going on in the hood that they do not see. But that's not the case with hip hop now. Hip hop is part of the problem. You think hip hop is part of the problem as opposed to I'm the solution? I'm just saying. Now? I mean, instead of trying to uplift kids nowadays, they're telling them how to do Zanny bars. You know what I'm saying? There is no more songs about be a good teacher, be a good lawyer, be a good this, be a good that. It's all about be a good drug dealer and be, be the one that got the biggest chains and take as many Zans and sip as much lean as you possibly can. Well, you had the song cocaine, but, but you were showing the negative parts of cocaine in that song. And you can always look back at any part of my, any Jane, stop this crazy thing, uh, cocaine, all of that. I was being the biggest hypocrite in the world because after I did that song, guess what? You dig what I'm saying? But I would never enforce that on the children who were listening to my music. I would do a song like Cocaine where you would think I'm talking about a girl through the whole song and then all of a sudden, don't you know by now that her name was Cocaine? You know, and then it was like, whoa, Jane, stop this crazy thing. I'm telling about what, what the crack epidemic was doing to the projects. Doctors, you know, studying the medical books, turning to big time liars and petty cash crooks. Nowadays, there is none of those. There are artists out here 
that are doing songs like that, but they're hidden, pushed way to the back because the powers that be don't want none of that positive message to come through. Well, you have the Kendrick Lamars, you have the J. Coles, you got a few artists that are... Yeah, you, you have know. a few of them, but the majority of stuff out here is not that. 